I like to spend my time in nature, boondocking in natural, beautiful, private areas for up to 14 days. But when you do that, you have to bring in everything you need, including water. But when you live in a space as tiny as mine, you really have to learn how to extend that fresh water tank. So today, I'm going to give you pro tips on how to extend that water so you can double your time in nature. Happy Sunday, everybody. It's Robin with Creativity RV. I hope you're all doing well out there. I am talking to you from the parking lot of an aquatic center in a beautiful, small Rocky Mountain town. You all know that you can look for showers in places like aquatic centers, Planet Fitness, truck stops, campground showers, or take a Navy shower, or use micellar water to wash your face. If you don't know what that is, I'll link it at the top of comments below. So I'm not gonna waste your time talking to you about saving water by how you shower. Instead, I'm going to talk to you about the other day-to-day -day chores that can decimate the levels of your fresh water while you're camping. I'm gonna take you guys with me on a recent trip in my Bambi Airstream that only has a 20 gallon freshwater tank and show you how I live day to day and extend that water for up to two weeks. Let's start when the tank was full. I'm about to leave. Batteries at 13. Fresh tank is 100. Black is zero. Let's see how long I can boondock before I run out of water and my tanks are full. When I'm on the road, I love to stop at farmer's markets or produce stands, but washing all of that produce can take a lot of water and living in an RV is not like living in a house. Let me show you how I do it. Now you can see me here washing my produce. That little blue bottle is full of food grade hydrogen peroxide. I'll put the link for that also below. Here's what I do. I drop it into some water, I soak, the produce and then I put it into a colander and quickly rinse it and then do the next piece of produce in this same bowl. You can also use food grade hydrogen peroxide to disinfect a wound or clean the house. So this little tiny bottle will go a really long way, including saving your water while you clean your produce. Doing your dishes can really kill your water levels, but what are you going to do? Eat everything out of a tin can? I don't. So these are my strategies for extending my water while I'm doing dishes. Now we all know that we can use paper plates, but let me tell you what I do with the plates after I use them. I collect the plates and all of my other paper products every day and burn them in my morning fire. Because another thing you have to consider while you're boondocking is where your trash goes. That was one of the things that surprised me most when I got on the road. So now I separate my trash into things that have to go into the landfill and things that I can burn. Using paper plates for me is a winner because I can burn them with everything else and it's great kindling for the morning fire. Then I try and cook as much as I can on that fire using a grill or foil paper. If you haven't done this before, it's amazing. You can wrap up a potato in some foil paper with maybe a little olive oil, salt and pepper, put it in the embers of your morning fire and by lunch you have a wonderful potato to eat or you can roast vegetables or do anything else. Then I just crumple up the foil and put it in my landfill trash bag. But you're not going to cook everything using paper plates and foil. So here are my tips for how to make your dish water last a really long time. The first thing is that I keep a bottle hanging on the wall filled with half vinegar, half water. I spray out my bowl or my pan or my plate or my forks, whatever, with that immediately after I eat when it's not stuck on and then I wipe it out with a paper towel, which I then later burn in the fire, and I stack it in the sink. I only do dishes dishes once a day, but I have a method even for that. Here's the difference between this and a house. I never fill up the sink with water anymore. What I do is I stack it all up and I start with some kind of a round receptacle usually. I put the soap in there and I wash it out and then I pour that soapy water into the next receptacle. Then when I rinse the first one, that water also goes into the next one and so on and so on. So what happens is I'm washing the dish and rinsing the dish and that's going into the next dish, which is usually bigger and bigger and bigger until I get into the biggest dish which is in the bottom, like you can see here, then all of the dishes are done with just that one bowl full of water. And then I use it to flush the toilet because RV toilets are not house toilets. House toilets flush, RV toilets rinse. 
So if you don't want to be rinsing your toilet with fresh water out of your tank, which is also a killer, just keep your dishwater to do it. Pour it in there, and when you need to flush it, flush it. And listen, I'm in the process of getting another Ogo composting toilet right now. If you guys are not familiar with composting toilets or an Ogo toilet, which is my favorite, I put a link to a video where I installed mine down below along with a coupon code. I've tried other ones. I would not go back to them. I only will use the Ogo now. I'm now putting it into my third rig. With a composting toilet, you never have to dump your black tank again and you don't have to use any of your fresh water to rinse your toilet bowl out. It's a win if you have a small water tank like me and you need to conserve that water. So how did I do after one day of washing all that produce, doing an entire sink full of dishes and flushing the toilet? Let's see. Still at 100, still at six. I did all those dishes with less than a gallon of water. Pretty good, right? But what if you have a grill pan or some pan that you burn the food in and it is just crusty and gross and usually you have to use a whole bunch of water to get that crud out of there and soak it? Let me give you my hack for that. What I do inside of the pan and for all kinds of other things in the house that get stained is I put a little bit of hot water in the bottom of the pan. Then I pour in a good amount of vinegar, swish it around, and then on top of that, I put in baking soda. You can see it bubbling here. When you swish it around after a minute of soaking, it has taken off all the crud from the sides of that pan. Then I wipe it out and put it with the other dishes to do over the course of a day. After a week on that trip, showering, doing dishes every day and flushing the toilet, I took another reading on my tanks. Let's see how I did. I still have 40% of my fresh water and my tank is 50% full. So I have enough to be here probably another week. If you follow my channel, you know that I was able to leave a heinous corporate job by going out and boondocking because it was so much less expensive than other kinds of travel. I love it, but I could not do it without strategies on how to control my water, my trash, and my dump. If you're the same, I hope this video has helped you. Please share it with a friend if you know somebody that can use it. Subscribe, please, if you haven't already. Remember that I have hundreds of other videos with tips and hacks. I'll see you guys next week with an all new one. Until then, everybody out there, have happy travels and be free.